I heard you had a really cute preacher last week. It's my wife. I, said, okay. I, I can say that. She's really sweet. She told me to wear my Dodger blue today. So yeah, go Dodgers. It's so awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, thanks for filling in for me, honey. That was awesome. It's nice to be able to be away and know that somebody's going to do something competent when I'm gone. So you did. You always do. Uh, you, some of you, you don't know about Darlene is that she has not only been a pastor's wife for 30 years, being my wife, but she also um, has been a pastor at a church, not a lead pastor, but an outreach pastor, and she's ordained as well, and many people don't know that, and she used to be scared to death to get up in front of people and speak, but she went to Toastmasters, and if you know what Toastmasters is, it's kind of a weird name, right? It's this public group that's really kind of pretty cheap to go to, and you learn how to get up front and all kinds of leadership skills, and that changed her life, so yeah, I'm so thankful she was able to fill in and do all that stuff for us. So I love the fact that at New City, there can be multiple voices and team teaching and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So, so good. But I'm back. Thanks for any of you that prayed for me. I was working with a new church in Minnesota. No, some of you have asked, I'm not moving to Minnesota. Thankfully, it's a little cold there. Snow came the day after we left, but um, we're back. So if you prayed, thank you. Great stuff happened with the church that we worked with for a couple of days that were there. So I really appreciate your prayers. So today, we're diving back into our series called Whole, and we're talking about physical formation. There are a few less people here in the room than there was when I was here two weeks ago, at least. I wasn't here last week, but, and often that's the case when we talk about this very intimidating subject, our bodies, physical formation. We have a, an, an assessment that we give at Soul Leader, and it actually gauges all the six dimensions of formation, spiritual, emotional, relational, mental, physical, missional, that we talk about. And, and uh, inevitably, the lowest scoring or one of the top two lowest scoring dimensions is physical formation. And so often people are really nervous about it. So I get it if you are. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. But as we look at the chart, Let's review a little bit, right? Go back to the chart. Thank you. Yeah, spiritual formation, that relationship with God, that vertical relationship. And the way we help remember that is spiritual formation, we say, is looking upward, right? Looking upward, which is helpful to know that even though God is not just up, it's that vertical relationship we have with God. Emotional formation, our feelings and our emotions, our family of origin issues, so many things that relate to what's going on inside of us. We describe emotional formation as looking inward. inward. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. Relational formation we dealt with next, and that's the importance of people in our lives. God created us to connect with other people. Relational formation is looking kind of around us and stuff and outward. And then we went to mental formation a couple weeks ago, and mental formation is a little different. I put it this way. Say it's looking onward because our minds are on something. The goal is to have your mind on God and your mind on healthy thinking, not on toxic thinking. Pastor James's description of him growing up in Chile was really appropriate for that, right? His view of what God thought of him versus what God wanted him to think, right? God loves him. God loves each of you. God loves each of us, but our mind often doesn't easily remind us that, right? You struggle with that. I struggle with that. I forget. That's mental formation, having healthy thinking, okay? And then today we're diving into physical formation, physical formation, and we're going to unpack that, which is so important. And let me just say a couple things up front. This is a difficult, difficult topic. It just is. Um, Our bodies are something God has given us, yet often they cause us problems. They have issues, uh, physical issues, mental, emotional types of issues. And it's a very, very sensitive subject. So I want to just say a few things. One, do not beat yourself up in any way by anything that you hear or said this morning. Second, know that anything I say, there's no judgment in any of the things we're going to talk about, okay? absolutely no judgment. In fact, one of the people that helped me understand this better was Pastor Sarah Heath that was here a few weeks ago talking on embodied formation. And I don't know if you remember her phrase, but she um, kind of aptly said, it's not, a, church isn't here to help you feel better. Church has helped you, uh, is here to help you feel better. In other words, honor your feelings. And I would say the same is true with your body. 
honor your body. This body that God's given us is so, so, so important. But often maybe we haven't treated it well or someone else hasn't treated it well. And we struggle with things like addictions, disordered eating, and things like that. And that really gets in the way. So just whatever we talk about this morning, and we're going to say a couple fun things, and we're going to say some serious things, but just know that I don't want anyone to feel judged in any way, okay? You good with that? Okay, please, please believe me with that. And do not beat yourself up about that. We can talk about this. My goal is to help us become more aware of our bodies in important ways. In fact, it was a number of years ago, actually in 2002, I was over at Fuller Seminary and I was writing my doctoral dissertation and I started to realize that if we don't pay attention to ourselves as whole people, all those things around the chart, spiritual, emotional, relational, mental, physical, missional, we actually have something huge out of our discipleship. It's really hard to follow Jesus with just a part of you, right? A fragment. It would be like they're saying, hey, Jesus, you can have my left leg and my left arm, but you can't have the rest of my stuff. So, doesn't work well, right? You, we, need to be, conclude, we need to include all of who we are. So, so important to be able to do that. So I started talking at that point, way back when I wrote that dissertation, about four areas, spiritual, emotional, relational, and missional, which we're going to get to next week. And just those four. But then I'd often share some stories because there's something about me that I really like to pay attention to my, my health that's important to me. So my wife and I would do a couple things. Darlene and I would do a kind of cleanse. Have any of you ever done a cleanse or a detox for your body? Some of you have probably done that. If you, if you have, God bless you. If you haven't, yeah, if you ever choose to do it, you've got something wonderful in store. But I always found some great results from doing that. But then people said, well, talk more about that. And many of you know I I work with pastors and leaders all over the place, and I would share stories of things I'd learned or something that had improved because I paid attention to this area. And then I realized there really is a physical formation. God gave us these bodies for a really important reason. And then that assessment that we created at Soul Leader, and I saw scores always so low in the physical formation area. Some of you took that a number of weeks ago when we were meeting over at LATC and you saw what your scores were. And at the end of this series, I wanna send that back out to everybody, that assessment. And we're gonna have, have a chance for you to do it again so you can see where you are. Not to see how low your scores are, but to see how you can pay attention and actually raise those scores. And then it came to a place where one of my mentors said this. Jesus spends more time in the Bible See if you've ever noticed this or seen this. Jesus spends more time in the Bible trying to get away from people than he does trying to find them. Well, why would he do that? People always found him. They'd always kind of find him somewhere. But he spent more time trying to get away because I think Jesus knew that his body, his health, his rhythms were really important, his rest. He goes on a boat once and falls asleep. And everybody's like, Jesus is asleep, help. Help. Well, that's because he was human too, and he needed rhythms of rest, just like we need rhythms of rest. And you know, I work with a lot of pastors too, and pastors are really stressed out. And then someone showed me this slide one day. Who said pastoring a church is stressful? I'm 42 and feeling great. Um, I didn't want that to be mean. I've been pastoring a long time, and um, that kind of scared me, that picture. He looks happy, but I'm not sure he's feeling great. Um, So I want us to be able to laugh about some of these things this morning here, right? So if you could kind of dive in uh, and laugh about some of these things. Here's one. I often look in the news and kind of read stories on internet or whatever. Uh, But there was one about a nutrition professor who lost 27 pounds. And you know how he did it? A Twinkies diet. A Twinkies diet. In fact, CNN posted this article about this experiment at Kansas State University who this professor subsisted on Twinkies and powdered donuts for 10 weeks. The result, he lost 27 pounds. So strange. Mark Hobbs' convenience store diet, he called it, involved downing a Twinkie every three hours, occasionally alternating with Little Debbie snacks, Doritos, and Oreos for some variety. Hobbes' experiment upheld his premise that in weight loss, pure calorie counting is what matters most, not the nutritional value of the food. I don't know. CNN reports his bad cholesterol, or LDL, dropped 20%. His good cholesterol, HDL, increased by 20%. 
Go figure. He also lowered the level of triglycerides, which are a form of fat, by 39%. That's where the head scratching comes in, Hobbes says. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm healthier? After eating Twinkies for 10 weeks in a row. That just turns my stomach, even thinking about it, right? Looking at those spongy little critters. But it's, it's funny, right? Um, and, and then there's the you know, infamous McDonald's stories, Happy Meals. You know, I don't know if any of you are McDonald's fans, but you, you've heard of the McDonald's experiments, right? Any of you? Well, here's one. Here's a little video that shows the McDonald's experiment. She buys a McDonald's Happy Meal, puts it on the coffee table. Look at the dates down below. Splashing in the sea, big white come along and made an entree out of me, and I'm sinking down in the food chain of your love. I'm sinking down, 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 baby, in the food chain of your love. It started out prime, a fine steak of a man, dropping down. Oh, six months and that Happy Meal looked exactly the same as it did six months earlier. It was called the eternal life of a Happy Meal. It just stays the same all the time. It just makes me laugh, right? It helps me remember there are many things we eat and put in our bodies, and I do too, that sometimes aren't even food. I don't know what it is, but it's a little bit strange, so I'm a little suspect of McDonald's. But if you love McDonald's, I'm not bashing you, okay? Like I said, no judgment. Got to believe me on that. No judgment, right? Here's a great story. A 105-year-old runner created a new age bracket for the 100-meter dash, and she set the record. Julia Hurricane Hawkins, she's a retired Louisiana teacher, became the first female track and uh, field athlete in the 105-plus age bracket to clock a time in the 100-meter dash. She crossed the finish line in... One minute, two seconds, slightly slower than she had hoped for. She says, it was wonderful to see so many family members and friends, but I wanted to do it in less than a minute, she said after the race. According to the National Senior Games Association, when someone in the crowd asked whether it made her feel any better to realize that her time was still less than her age, she said, no. <laughs> no, she she wanted to do better. Hawkins was a lifelong cyclist before losing interest late in life because of a lack of competition. She took up running at age 100. And she doesn't plan to slow down anytime soon, the article said. I want to keep running as long as I can, Hawkins said. My message to others is that you have to stay active if you want to be healthy and happy as you age. My wife and I, Darlene, and I turned on the news this morning. Julia Hawkins died last week at 108 years old. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I was just amazed. I'm like, I'm telling that story this morning. She, she's literally in the news. Some of you might have seen that. You know, I'm amazed at people that you, you, you can't do what you can't do, but you can do something maybe. And, and obviously she was able to do something. This, this movement. All of us can't run. I can't run. I have bad knees. I've had bad knees my entire life since elementary school. But I try to move and, and walk and do what you can do. And that's a good thing because it's a way to steward this amazing body that God has given us. Here's a definition of physical formation. Simple definition, it's the opportunity to discipline our physical bodies with proper habits of relaxation, sleep, eating, and exercise for the, catch this part, for the purpose of godliness, right? It's not so you can have six-pack abs. It's not so you can look like Fred down here who looks amazing all the time, right? Let me see those muscles. There they are, yeah. Good job. You know, I, it's not for comparison, but so much media makes us always compare our bodies and then makes us feel inadequate. That's not what this is about. God has given us bodies that work sometimes until they don't, right? And then he's given us doctors to help us keep them working and, and work in new and different ways and thank God for medications and all those kinds of things. But it's really because God knows these bodies, if we don't treat them well, it's really hard to follow him. It's really hard to follow God. So that's why I need to wake up to that reality. So 
1 Corinthians 3, kind of a passage, very short passage of Scripture. Um, there are other places we could look at in Scripture, but this is maybe where your mind goes when you think of our bodies. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Now, I always like to say, you together, right? So we know the church communally is like the temple. So you can say, literally, this is God's temple right here, New City Church. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but there is that individual component as well, that your body, as it says, you are a temple, literally a sanctuary. That's what temple means. What's a sanctuary? It's a place of worship. It's a place of worship, right? A place where we go to church, yeah, a place where God dwells, a place where, I mean, it's this amazing thing. So just ask yourself, do you treat yourself, your body, as a sanctuary, as a temple, Many, most of us would have to say, yeah, probably not so much. Or maybe I didn't used to, and then I've tried to learn, or I got into recovery and tried to do a better job of that. We can, again, be reflective and figure out how to do it in new and different ways. Here's a quote that I absolutely love. Jamie Lee Finch says this, what if instead of viewing our bodies as something disconnected from who we are that can be neglected or ignored, we viewed our bodies as a person who loves me? Let that sink in for a second. It's a little weird to think of yourself outside yourself, but what if you viewed your body, your body loves you. Your body's trying to help you. Your body wants you to do what God wants you to do. Your body wants you to love others and serve others. Does that make sense? It's a different way of seeing it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's gonna take a while to wrap your head around that one for a while, but reflect on it if you can. So why is this important? A few other things. Look at the amount in Scripture. If you were to go and look throughout the Gospels and read the stories of Jesus, the amount of physical healing that Jesus does in his ministry, Jesus put a high priority on people being physically whole. If he didn't, people would have come and he would have just said, you're saved. You're, you know, you're going to heaven when you die. Jesus didn't do that. He often said, you are healed. And then they were able to go do what they were called to do. I love that. In this area of formation, we can see, and we've said this a ton of times, so you're probably sick of hearing it, but the ancient Gnostic dualism that looked upon matter as evil, which included bodies, bodies evil, and spirit as good, is still very present today. We live a modern day Gnosticism. That's not good, okay? We don't live in wholeness if we're living that way. You wanna be able to understand that your body is something created by God as well, okay? So important. When the body is ignored, neglected, it does a better job of getting in the way. Getting in the way. Have you ever tried to focus on anything or be present with someone when you've gotten only a few hours sleep? Okay, some of you probably woke up earlier this morning than you needed to because of the total time change, right? I feel a little tired right now. It's harder. But if you only have a few hours sleep or sometimes no sleep and then you try to be present with someone, it doesn't work, does it? It's really hard. How do you feel, here's another one, after a meal that you've eaten way too much, you ate way too much or way too much junk food or something like that, or when you've neglected to eat or maybe didn't even have food to eat, right, that you needed for nutrition, but you needed energy for something really important. It's hard, it's hard, because our body is saying it, it needs food. How about trying to do something that you used to be able to do, but now when you try, you're winded or inflexible or sore or exhausted just trying, okay? I get there, when I stop moving or I stop paying attention or I'm sick for a while, the body stops cooperating and then it gets in the way. Does that make sense? This is why our bodies matter so much. So let's look at the need. So when we talk about physical formation, it's really five areas. That's a lot of areas, okay? They're all on the screen. First one is the stresses of daily life. Anybody think life's stressful? Anybody in that with me? Oh my gosh, yeah. And getting more stressful all the time, it feels like, right? This is an incredibly stressful week, even, that we're living in. I'm going to pray that in the pastoral prayer at the end today um, to help prepare us for the stress that we are feeling right now and coming. And here's why this matters. 
When you feel stress, okay, now there is a form of good stress called you stress, E-U stress, which means that it's just enough. Like a lot of our jobs, if you're working, have that kind of stress, right? You've got to get a certain amount of tasks done or do certain things, responsibilities, and that causes a little bit of stress. And doctors will tell us that's good for us. We need a little bit of stress. The problem comes when that stress passes a line and now there's too much stress and your adrenal glands, some of you remember the sermon, I showed a picture of adrenal gland on the screen a while ago and I talked about my own adrenal fatigue and that if you don't take care of your adrenal system, it causes problems. Well, that's what stress does. And we live with stress every day. All of us do. The question is how much of it and for how long and what you're able to do to rest from it and recover from it. Does that make sense? So that's one reason. It's really important. Adrenaline and stress. Number two, insufficient sleep or rest or daily rhythms. We are an incredibly underslept people, generation, culture. We do not honor sleep well for the most part, often because sometimes it's because of our drivenness, sometimes it's because we're working many jobs or trying to make ends meet. And so it creates a cycle that aren't healthy daily rhythms and not good space for rest because you might not even have time for proper rest. I felt a little like that this week. I was on an airplane. I had to fly to Minnesota and work with this other church. And I was there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, flew back Wednesday, didn't get back to late Wednesday night, tired, and then had to pick up and do all the other things in my week, okay? There was just a lot. My rhythms were way out of sync, which is probably another reason I'm feeling tired today. So this is an important area to pay attention to your sleep and your rest and your rhythms, okay? Now, I want to say I want to be really sensitive again because some of us have things in our life, in our living situation that don't make that easy. I get that. Okay? And we need to get that. And as a community, as a church, support each other to try to help support each other in whatever way we can with some of these things. Okay? That makes sense? Third one have to do with eat poor eating habits, poor nutrition. That's important to pay attention to as well. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. But again, some of us don't have the ability to pay for good, healthy nutrition, to pay for organic food. It's so expensive. Food prices have gone through the roof, let alone healthier food prices. So then we find ourselves having to buy food that's more affordable, and then our body goes, oh, what are you feeding me, right? So I get it. That's always, again, no judgment on this. I just want us all to be able to pay attention to it. I love the fact that there was a donation of some apples. I think that was Jenny or whatever out on the table this morning, a whole bunch of bags of apples. That's so good. Like Pastor James said, oh, healthy snacks this morning for you to be able to take. That's a beautiful thing because sometimes it's hard to find some of that, right? So do what you can, not what you can't, okay? And to figure out ways to support each other. Like I was thinking when, for the watch party uh, Tuesday night, you know, and, and Jenny says, bring snacks. Whenever you're invited to bring snacks to something like that, think, oh, what will the group be eating and need? Maybe I'll help bring something healthy because there will probably be a bunch of chips and, you know, cookies and stuff like that. So I'm going to bring a healthier alternative as well. We can do that. Funny story. I was talking to the same stuff about with a church I'd worked for many, many years, and they got so convicted because they had a big old donut ministry every Sunday morning, and everybody would be in line, and it was literally the pastor's mother and father that would pass out the donuts, okay, to everybody. And they bought boxes and boxes of donuts and it was just you know everybody have donuts, but they felt so convicted they like we can't do that anymore we're hurting people with those donuts so they decided to do like vegetable platters and they offered it sunday morning there was almost a church split the church was almost destroyed so the next week the donuts had to come back okay people they could not make the shift right the fun part they tried they wanted so badly to help it's got to be a personal decision, right? right? It's hard to mandate something like that and tell people, you just got to eat differently. Where's our donuts? It was mutiny. It's pretty funny. The other one, inadequate exercise or movement, okay? Exercise is important, but some of us can't exercise. You have limit yeah, limitations, physical inabilities to do it. 
So do what you can to move, right? We now know movement is one of the most important things. When your body keeps moving, it keeps living. Even in like, you know, Julia, the 105 year old, 108 year old who just passed away, it's a great example of that. If you can keep moving, go on things like the hike, the new city hike, that's movement, right? It's a flat hike, you can do it, you can get out and do it. It was great being on the Ciclavia bicycle ride a couple weeks ago with those of us that went, that was so fun, that's movement. Do what you can, right? I'm not saying everybody's go get a, has to go get a big old gym membership or, or something like that, but yeah, <laughs> you got a gym membership, Fred? Yeah, there's things you can do, right? I appreciate like even Union Rescue Mission has an awesome gym. When we were there a couple weeks ago with John hosting us and um, Albert, who's a chaplain, and Pastor Phyllis was with us, that there was great gym equipment there, and that that's something that you can utilize when it's there. So even in spaces like that, again, look for what you can do, not for what you can't do. And the last one, I ignored for a bunch of years, and I already mentioned it, it's embodiment, the way we view and live in our bodies. And if you missed that sermon that Sarah did, uh, on embodied formation. I'd encourage you to go back and listen to it or watch it because she helped me, maybe more than anyone else, understand the importance of being kind to our bodies, loving our bodies, understanding that our bodies in many ways have been hurt and abused by others, and that's not okay. Um, and even in this talk, I know that it can run the risk of feeling like um, making our bodies bad or that you're feeling judgment. It's why I'm trying to really overstate. Do not hear that from me, please. I, I want you to love your body and steward it as a gift given to you by God. Does that make sense? So embodiment is so, 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 so important. I want to hear for a couple minutes from you. I think we got some time just to do this, but I'd love to hear some reflections really quick, okay? I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand if you got a response, but I want to see what challenges do you face in each of these areas, okay? So just anything that like comes to mind. You know, I mentioned my adrenal fatigue. I showed you my, you know, picture of an adrenal gland at some point that I've really struggled with stress, but what might be causing some of you extra stress right now? Raised by a show of hand, Fred? Money. Money. Oh my gosh, always, yeah, yeah. Election. Yeah, thanks, Joseph. Big stress. Bad eating. Bad eating. Yeah, Daryl, thanks for being honest. Those all do contribute to stresses, right? What about sleep, rest, daily rhythms? Anything come to mind for that? I know for me, I'm kind of a self-professed workaholic. I used to drive myself, especially in my 20s and 30s, uh, until late, late at night, stay up till 12 and 1 and just drive, drive. I had to do more because I thought God wouldn't be pleased with me if I didn't do that. So that caused horrible, not only stress in my life, but really, really bad daily rhythms as well. What comes to mind for you? What gets in the way of good sleep or rest? Three hours of sleep at night doesn't do it. Say it one more time. Three hours of sleep at night doesn't do it. No, it doesn't do it, right? You know, thanks, Scott. It's just not enough, right? Bathroom visits, you know, when you wake up. You got to cooperate with the body unless you wear a diaper or something to bed, right? I got to do that too. The older I get, the more I know. We'll go back here and then back up here. Yep. Yeah, it kind of, yep, for sure. Sleeping too long, that can happen too, right? Um, I think it's a good practice to sometimes if you do wake up with an alarm to try to not wake up with an alarm and that kind of helps you know how much sleep you need, but for, for me, I know when I used to sleep too long, it was an escape because I was so depressed I didn't want to wake up and face my day. So there's all kinds of reasons. I'm not saying that's yours, Joseph, by any means, but it is possible. In fact, there's a Bible verse, and people used to use this against me. It's in Proverbs. As a door turns on its hinge, so a sluggard turns on their bed. That's what it said. Yeah, and my friends, my friends thought I slept too much, so they used to quote that verse to me. Yeah, please. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Yep. The pressure of productivity. Yeah. This is, it's, it's there always, right? And depending on what your job situation is and going on, you're going to experience it different ways, but that's one of the biggest ones. What about, oh, one more. Yeah. Jared. Uh, late night doom scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it for sure. Late night doom throwing. Scrolling, that's scrolling. Thank you. Eating and nutrition. Eating and nutrition. What gets in the way there? Real practical. Anybody? Bad habits. Bad habits. Yeah, thank you. Mommy talk is, uh, talk, uh, 
Jack in the Box. <laughs> you know, tacos at Jack in the Box. When there's something you really love, right? It becomes like a thing and you just want to go do it. Comfort food is a thing, right? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, needing to flip one meal for free. Yeah. So there's, so there's so many things that we can, you know, get at this. For me, I didn't think I was disordered in my eating. You know that cleanse I told you about a little bit that, that Darlene and I would do? One of our best friends said to me one day, she goes, you really binge and purge. You, you, you have an eating disorder. And I'm like, I, 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 I. I don't, I've not done that. I've not gone and, and thrown up, right, or eaten a lot, and I didn't think I had an eating disorder. But then she goes, well, do you know how we, you guys do that cleanse? You do it, and then you eat really healthy for a while, and then you go, and then you binge again, and you go part, and you eat a lot of junk. And I would do, saw myself doing this over the years. So even though I was trying to eat healthy for a time, because it felt like it was depriving me, then I would go binge, and she called that binge and purge. I have an eating disorder. I had to admit that for me, it's disordered eating, okay? It doesn't always look the same. So we need to pay attention to the things like that in our lives that we do um, and be able to pay, yeah, be able to take some ownership, which I even heard here. Thanks for the level of ownership. How about exercise and movement? What challenges do you face in that area, just practically speaking? Anything come to mind? Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can always do things like that, right? Um, to use stairs instead of escalators or walk it instead of just riding. Fred? Uh, relying too much on elevators. Say it again? Relying too much on elevators. Relying too much on elevator. Yeah, kind of same thing, different, said a different way. Yeah, so Joseph? Decide the time to do the exercise. The time. The time to do the exercise, right? Because the exercise does take time. It's often good to figure out how can you make kill two birds with one stone. Like if you can walk somewhere instead of taking a car or tra public transportation and you're able to walk that way, but finding the time, it's big. Not being consistent. Yeah, not being consistent with it. It's easy to get on a commitment, right? We're about to come up on a new year, January. New Year's resolutions, and then we all make that, and we make a few things, and by the second week of January, they're like all done again, right? Consistency is so, so hard. Yeah, Lita. The holidays. We're coming up on holidays, and that makes some of these things even harder. Please. Yeah, yeah. Do an exercise for all those good reasons, right? For your heart to stay strong, for your blood, for your system, all, all those things. So many good benefits. And how about the last one, the way you view or live in your body? That's a little harder one to grasp, but anybody have a thought for how that's a challenge? Oh, sorry. I would say when, uh, when you have so much on your plate, you're, all, you're just kind of just going with the flow and kind of just like don't even like think about like, you know, like, like do an introspection of who you are. Yep. Physically. Yep. Yeah. When there's too much on your plate. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, society and our perception of bodies and what society says you should look like. Yeah. And what you should be doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, what society says you should or shouldn't be doing with your body, that whole perception. It's in media and advertising and everywhere we look. Um, to me, I guess it'd be not trusting God on his love for you first. Yeah, not trusting God on God's love for us first. That's huge. Well said. Jared, last one. Sometimes, like, I get frustrated with, like, limitations in my body. It's yeah. Like Yeah. Uh, which is not a good way to look at it. Right. Thank you. Yeah, to look if you get too adversarial with it, it's not a good way to look with to look at it. So this is like something it's it's like an exercise in and of itself, looking at your body in all these new ways. It takes some time to understand. It. it is so important in our lives because many of us write off the importance of the body as unimportant or beyond redemption, and the natural result is ignoring our bodies and hoping that they'll somehow cooperate with our spiritual goals, and then they don't. They won't if we ignore our body. Let me. I said, I said something a little earlier, um, and I just wanted to say this. Um, we would probably need to talk about more of this in the future as a church because there is a thing called food insecurity. 
food insecurity. Um, that was a new phrase to me a few years ago, and I was thankful to learn it. It's when healthy foods are either physically unavailable or economically unfeasible. Uh, the USDA definition is the disruption of food intake or eating patterns because of lack of money or other resources, and it affects approximately one in eight North Americans, can be influenced by things like income, employment status, even race, race ethnicity, disability, access to transportation, proximity to grocery stores, so many things. Children and adults are at increased risk of various negative health outcomes, including obesity, type 2 diabetes, developmental delays, and poor mental health. Now, I, I, I tell you that because I know, as New City Church, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Food insecurity is a thing in your life. Um, and I get it. And here's the thing that I was so encouraged by. Some churches are doing things about that. There are programs out there, and, I, and we can even let you know some about those programs, or Pastor Phyllis might be able to do some of that, where churches get together and do some education and some resourcing around this. So where that is an issue for you, right? Finances, maybe. You, you can't even afford to buy the food uh, that you take, or there's some health issues and stuff. There are some things churches can do to help each other learn, bond together in community, and resource each other. And I think that's beautiful, right? Because it's not just like, you're on your own, physical formation, just take care of yourself. No, there's literally some programs that have been funded well that churches can do together. And while I don't have time to expand all that today, I love that. And I think New City could really benefit from something like that. How do you help each other? You already do, right? Many people bring food. They donate some things. They're often here in the church office. You can take some of that away. But that just kind of scratches the surface. There are a bunch more things as well. So in this category, I don't want to just like, again, make it feel like you got to try harder, do more. That's not it at all, okay? I think there's some really cool things that churches can do to do even better in this area. Quote by Wendell Berry. He says this, only by restoring the broken connections can we be healed? Connection is health. We lose our health and create profitable diseases and dependencies by failing to see the direct connections between living and eating, eating and working, working and loving. I love the holistic way that Wendell Berry, who's a poet, he's a farmer, he writes about these things, and I think that's really beautiful. Here's a few practices for change and growth. You say, Michael, what can I do about it? A couple things. Implement some daily rhythms. Look at the rhythms that you have during your day and figure out how you might want to change some of those. Now, that's different for all of us. Maybe it means getting up a little earlier if you're sleeping too much, or you need to find some of the space to move a little bit more or to do something, okay? Look at your schedule and see if there's something you can do. If you work, you have a lunch hour. Maybe in addition to having a healthier lunch, you might choose to do something on there or walk with a friend friend, and now you've got relational formation going on and the ability to actually move or walk during it. Do you get my idea? Do you get kind of where I'm going with this? Um, to, to do some new things. Try some new things in this area. The second one is just a word, enough. I think one of the healthiest things you can do when you lay down at night and you're trying to sleep, and maybe some of the things that keeps us from sleeping well is when we feel we haven't pleased God or we haven't done enough. And I just say this word, enough. Enough. I've done enough. God knows I've done enough. And the, maybe the most important thing, God believes you are enough. It's a way to kind of live in a place of contentment and reflection that God wants you to know you are enough and we are enough. And sometimes that driven that we've already talked about and some of your good examples here forces and drives us to unhealthy places. And that causes our adrenaline and stress to just increase. Another one, participating in play and leisure, right? I love this is a church that can have fun. You can go do some things together, right? We often, when we grow up and we lose, we put childhood behind us, we stop playing. And I don't think that's good. I think you can be playful. I watch loving you guys play games here in the church office sometimes, right? There's just such a playful spirit. And how do you do leisure in a way, assuming that's something that you're able to do and can do, where it's restorative to your soul and your body, right? You got to look for ways to have fun, laugh, do leisure, etc. And one last one, and if we had a bunch of more time, I would have done this together with you, but it's called mindful eating. And mindful eating is just taking whatever food is in front of you. I'd suggest doing it, like if you could get an orange, an orange is beautiful to do it with. Because if you take an orange and you, let's say, bite into it, 
that's already a little of interesting experience, right? When you bite into an orange, can you kind of taste it with me right now if you have to start peeling it? And then you start to peel it, and what happens? There's sometimes a little bit of a spray. You ever get squirted by an orange when you're peeling it? And you peel that back, and now you can smell it. You see, this is a whole sensory experience. You can smell that citrus, right? And then the juice starts to drip all over your hands, and your hands gets all sticky as you do it. Now, let's say you get all that peel off, and then you're holding that orange there, and you actually can pull it apart. Have you ever looked closely at all those, I don't even know what they're called, like corpuscles, like the little, little pockets of juice? Each wedge of orange is full of hundreds of little pockets of juice. Don't just pop it in your mouth. Look at that. Maybe eat, try to eat one of those little.